Japan is a unique country with a distinct culture, climate, and a rich tapestry of unwritten rules and traditions. And while many of these will be foreign to travelers visiting for a short time, there are some clues that you need to know so you don't get into a sticky situation while having the trip of a lifetime. After living in Japan for many years, here is what I wish that I knew before coming to Japan. Number 1. Carry cash at all times. This felt very strange to me at first, coming from a country where I wouldn't feel comfortable carrying more than $100 for fear of losing it or getting mugged. I now feel uncomfortable going anywhere in Japan with less than 30,000 yen. In fact, most Japanese will carry 50 to 100,000 yen or 372 to 745 US dollars at any given time. Japan is a safe country and while that doesn't mean you shouldn't be careful, carrying any less than 30 to 50,000 yen could result in you wasting your valuable travel time searching for an ATM as many establishments will only accept cash. Japan is adopting more credit card and smart pay options, but outside of major cities, these are few and far between. And while talking about cash, that brings us to unspoken rule number two, don't hand money to people. Money is rarely passed directly from hand to hand in Japan. When paying, you will often see a small tray, unless you are paying by an automated machine. So place your money on that tray and you should receive your change and receipt on the same tray. There will be some situations where this is not the case however. If you cannot see this tray, then handing money to the cashier or putting it on the counter is fine. Also, I have noticed that in some more friendly regions of Japan, such as Kansai's Osaka, that cashiers will often hand you your change to you personally, provided you are a foreigner, or it is somewhere more convenient to do so, like in a taxi. And speaking of taxis, number three, don't open or close doors when using taxis in Japan. In the past, Japan's taxis were smaller and the drivers would open the door for passengers as a sign of respect. But as cars became larger and streets busier, a solution was needed for the rapidly developing country. In 1964, when Tokyo was hosting the Olympic Games, a solution was found, the automatic car door. It might feel strange for you to not close the door after you, but if you do so, then the door may not close correctly and the driver may be unsure if it's safe to proceed. To enjoy this feature and not inconvenience your driver, just don't open and close the doors. The only exception to this is the front seat, which might not always be automatic. Because it's typical for Japanese to only sit in the back seat of a taxi unless traveling with a large party. However, I also don't actually recommend that you use the taxis in Japan unless you have no other option. Taxi services in Japan is by far the most expensive form of travel. A trip from Narita Airport to Shinjuku in the heart of Tokyo will cost upwards of 28,500 yen or $212. And now you might see why my first tip was to carry cash on you at all times in Japan for just such an emergency. Trains and buses are a fraction of the price. And unfortunately, Japan has no real form of ride sharing due to taxi loss. Obvious. Using Uber in Japan will just summon a normal taxi to your location with the normal price. Number 4. The Language Barrier a common concern for any traveler is will you be able to communicate and find your way while traveling in Japan? And fortunately, you don't really need to worry here. In an effort to increase international tourism, Japan has updated nearly every directional sign with both English and Japanese. Combined with modern apps for navigation and translation, it is quite possible to travel and even live in Japan without knowing the language. That said, there are a few phrases that are incredibly helpful and only take a few minutes to learn. Sumimasen will be the most useful word you'll ever learn. Learn. You can use it to say sorry, excuse me, or get someone's attention. For example, if you are at a restaurant and want to order something, stick your hand up and say sumimasen to get the waiter's attention. This might feel a little awkward at first depending on your culture, but this is how the locals do it. Almost everyone will have heard the phrase arigato, which means thank you, but you can make this more polite by saying arigato gozaimasu. Hai means yes in Japan, and while ie is taught as no, it can sound a little harsh. Instead, you can say daijobu, which means it's okay, and can also be used for no instead. Such as, if someone handed you something, you could say daijobu, means it's okay, I don't want it. A couple phrases that are useful are ego wakarimasu ka? Do you speak English? Doko desu ka? Where is? For example, toire doko desu ka? Where is the toilet? Toire is one of Japan's many loan words, and that is a secret tip to communicating in Japan. If you find yourself in a tricky situation, you can attempt to elongate a word to see if it makes sense in Japanese. For example, credit card becomes credit card. Credit card wa daijoubu desu ka? Is credit card okay? 
Starbucks would become Starbucksu. Starbucksu doko desu ka? Where is the Starbucks? Number 5. When not to travel. Japan has four beautifully distinct seasons, each with unique experiences for anyone's travels. But there are two times in the year that I just don't recommend visiting Japan, and that's Golden Week and the Abon season. Golden Week happens in spring from April 29th to May 5th, and is made up of four national holidays. Showa Day, Constitution Day, Green Day, On holiday. but not that one, and Children's Day. Depending on how these fall during the year, they can be anywhere from a couple days off to a full week or even a nine day vacation for workers taking two paid days off, making it the busiest time in the year for people getting away from work. Roads are crowded, trains are packed, and hotel prices skyrocket as the nation collectively lets off steam from the year. The summer festival of Bonn is a similar situation, although people will typically visit their relatives during this time. Its exact dates change every year with the lunar calendar, but it is roughly around mid-August. Summer is also my least recommended season. As much as I love the hot weather, temperatures routinely exceed over 36 degrees or around 97 degrees Fahrenheit with 100% humidity. This Oppressive heat carries a real risk of heat stroke if you're carrying bags around or visiting many tourist destinations while traveling. And anyone that is not used to this type of climate should rethink travel during this time. This isn't the only inconvenience to traveling during Japan's national holidays, as depending on your location, bank ATMs can even shut down during the holidays as well, because they need a vacation too apparently. My own bank actually does this, but it shouldn't be a problem at convenience stores. It's worth keeping in mind however, and another reason why carrying cash with you in Japan is so important. With that all said, there are a couple benefits to traveling during Golden Week and the Abon season, as this is the time of year you can see carp streamers called Koi Nobori flying for Children's Day or the beautiful summer lanterns honoring ancestors during a bon. Number six, don't forget a towel. Well, at least consider bringing a small towel or tissue. Many Japanese bathrooms across the country won't have paper towels to dry your hands because most Japanese people carry a small hand towel with them. Much has been written on the subject of towels and they are about the most massively useful thing an interstellar hitchhiker can have. You can even use them to reserve tables. Of course, you don't exclusively need a towel to take advantage of this unwritten rule, but any item you place on a table, be it a bag, phone, laptop, hat, or just about anything in your pocket signals that the table has been taken. Personally, I wouldn't recommend leaving any valuables lying around like this, but every day people in Japan do this, confident that their property will be there when they return. Now, even if you don't take advantage of this rule, it's good to know, because if you see a lone table with no one in sight, with a bag or a phone resting on it, you don't need to assume that it's lost property and try to return it to the shop or police station. Just leave it be. Etiquette in public. One thing you will notice in Japan compared to other Asian countries is that it's very quiet. People won't talk loud on trains or even on the street, provided they aren't coming out of a bar. Japanese society is focused on not making a scene and avoiding confrontation, so be mindful of your surroundings as people likely won't tell you if you're being a disturbance. For trains which get very busy, make sure that your backpack isn't hitting anyone. Japanese people will take off their backpacks or wear them on their front just to make sure that it's not interfering with anyone. You should also yield your seat for the elderly or the pregnant, but this is true in every country. For taking photos in public, try not to focus on any one person in particular and watch out for no photo signs that appear on private streets. When receiving an invitation in Japan, you should take it with a grain of salt. An offer to go somewhere like a barbecue or hiking next week is really about a 50% chance of being a real offer. If the offer isn't presented with doing it immediately or an exact future date and time is provided, then it really isn't an invitation at all. Just a nice thought that they had. Likewise, if you offer to do something in Japan with a local and they say maybe, they really aren't interested in it at all. If they are, they'll either say yes or they'll ask when and where. But rarely, if ever, will they give a flat out no. Don't be offended by this, it's just a cultural thing. You'll definitely notice how clean Japanese streets are, but at the same time, and somewhat perplexingly, is the lack of trash cans on the street. The only place you ever really see trash cans is at train stations or places where food is sold, such as festivals or convenience stores. And this leads to why people say it's rude to eat and walk while in Japan. Eating while walking means that you'll drop things like crumbs or wrappers as you walk, or be forced to keep your trash with you in your pockets 
or bag. This is why you'll often see Japanese people eating outside of a convenience store and then run back inside to dispose of their trash before moving on. This doesn't always hold true, however, and it is common to see people eating and walking during street festivals, which are common throughout the year. If you see many of these stalls while exploring Japan, you won't need to worry, and there will be temporary trash cans out for the occasion, so you won't have to carry your trash too far. It's worth mentioning here that Japan isn't just fish and rice. Some people assume that Japanese people eat fish every day, and because of that, people who don't like fish are adverse to traveling in Japan. This really isn't the case though. Of course, sushi is a popular and famous dish in Japan, but there are all kinds of food to suit almost every diet. Fried chicken, soups, noodles like ramens are among the most popular. It is, however, important to be aware of what you eat if you have any allergies or are vegetarian or vegan in Japan. Japanese restaurants are not very flexible and they usually won't substitute items on the menu or make altercations if they contain an allergen. In most cases, they will recommend you to try eating something else and waiters will usually not understand exactly what is in the food being served and list of allergens will not be displayed on small store menus. So be careful about this. Many Japanese also do not quite understand the concepts of vegetarianism or veganism as well and will recommend fish if you tell them that you don't eat meat. Also, many sauces used in Japanese cooking cooking contain animal products, which makes it very difficult to find vegan options in Japan. If this is a concern for you, then I recommend getting an app that shows restaurants that cater to your diet before coming to Japan. This might be one of the most important tips. Before coming to Japan, it is imperative to check if your medication will be allowed. For most travelers, this won't be a concern provided you are only bringing less than one month's supply and you have a prescription on you. However, Japan is very, very strict when it comes to over-the-counter painkillers that might be fine in your country and certain medications are outright banned. You can check online for a list of these before you depart, but under no circumstances bring any recreational drugs into Japan. The penalties for doing so are incredibly steep to the extent that hard drugs can land you in jail for upwards of three weeks without allowing you contact to the outside world. Don't mess around here. Tourists must carry passports with them at all times in Japan. You might be worried about losing it, but if you are stopped by a policeman while in Japan, you are required by law to show them your passport. And while I've never actually seen this happen before, it's better to be safe than sorry. And on a positive note, you can actually take advantage of tax-free shopping outside of the airport at certain stores, which will give you a flat 10% discount when presenting your passport, a simple saving that you should not deprive yourself of when traveling in Japan. Make sure you remove your shoes when appropriate. Japanese people usually do not wear shoes inside and having comfortable, easy to remove shoes is important so you can quickly slip on and off your shoes without slowing down people behind you. So don't wear any complicated laces. It's very easy to tell which places require you to move your shoes because they will often be marked with a step and there will be slippers for guests. When in doubt, just look at what the other people around you are doing. And there will also be a sign or a shoe box to show you the way. Don't worry, you don't need to take off your shoes when you go to McDonald's or anything. Last tip is simply do not tip. Japan is not a tipping culture and it's seen as rude. I know some people will think that it might be nice to leave a tip even though it's not the culture, but leaving a tip at the restaurant will actually cause them stress as they will seek to return your money. The only situation you will ever tip in Japan is if you see a tip jar and then it's purely optional. Ultimately, you don't need to be too worried when coming to Japan. People here are very considerate and understand that you are from a different culture. Everybody makes mistakes when traveling and it's really part of the experience. But if you do your best to be considerate considerate and polite to others, they'll notice, and any of the small mistakes that you make won't matter that much at all. If you found this helpful, then leave me a like, comment with any of your tips below, and if you're planning a trip to Japan and don't know where to start, then you need to check out my guide of how I would spend my first trip in Japan here.